next problem. What we're looking at now is one where we've got um, an impedance. Let's say the windings of a motor. How are they connected according to that diagram? In star. Yeah, here's our, this is our star point. One, um, one end of each winding connected together in the middle. So we could draw that like that. Okay. And that's how it's connected. With that point there being equivalent to that point up there. And the question is saying line voltage for 40 volts. How could I write these impedances out? Could do. But I'm not going to at this moment in time. Because we, in this question, we don't need to we don't need to consider the phase of these quantities that we're um, calculating. We're only interested we're interested in their magnitudes, how big they are, how many amps it is, how many volts it is, how much power, what s is. So we are not overly concerned with the fact that different currents are out of phase with each other at this stage. Okay. How could I find I the current in each line? What do I need to do to find the current in each line? How do we do that with the last load? The first thing we found was what? Did we not find the resistance? Well, that was connected in star current in each line. Oh yeah, we did do that. All right, no worries. In this particular case, how could we find the impedance of each phase? And I mean the magnitude of it. I.e., if we're talking about this triangle, where that's R, that is um, XL, and that is Z. From that triangle, we know XL, we've been given it. This is XL for one phase. That's R for one phase. So now can we find it? This is 4. This is 3. Pythagoras. Root 4 squared plus 3 squared. No calculator. What's the answer? One of them special triangles. You used to get your if you're a fabricator, you'd now get things squared up. Four squared is sixteen, three squared is nine, nine and sixteen is twenty-five, square root of twenty-five is five. Three, four, five triangle. The other one off the top of my head is 5, 12, and 13. They're the whole number right angle triangles that I know of. Alright? So, 5 ohms. Now, now, because we know the impedance, we can find the magnitude of the phase current. 
IP because that's equal to E phase over the Z phase we just calculated. How do we know we can calculate E phase from what we've learned this evening? From the information we've been given? That's what? EL over root 3, yeah. Divided by this 5 ohms equals. And that has uh, so 440 over root 3 divided by 5. So, I, I, I kind of changed away from what I, at one time I put there because I don't really see any kind of what we're analysing here is what would effectively be um, the windings of a motor, okay? And the, wind, the, the, the fact that that's an inductor and a resistor in series is only a representation of that being the inductance and that being the resistance of the windings. They're not separatable components, so you couldn't measure the voltage just across the inductance anyway. I don't necessarily see, in this case, a point in calculating that. So I can't remember why I put that there three, four, five years ago, probably because that was a question in a book. But sometimes you find these questions in a book and you think, why are you, why are you showing me how to calculate that? Now, I don't see a point in, in knowing it. Okay, so we, ch we kind of changed that to the Typical Q and C typical S. Okay? That's what we're going to end up doing. And indeed, in between there, probably put it in. C, total P, D, total S. So, C, for each phase, how can I calculate the power? P phase. using a similar method in watts. To calculate Q phase, I used IP squared times XL. We're on this side, this part of the triangle now. Sorry? We can't use E because we're connected in that. Oh. Even if we knew the phase voltage, yeah, the phase voltage is across both components in series. So even if we worked out by doing the line voltage of a root 3, that phase voltage is across both components, not just the resistor or just the inductance. So, do you kind of get what I mean there? So, yes, there's that volts times amps version of power formula, but in this case, that isn't any good to us. What is what replaces that for the resistor? Resistance. So it's simply IP squared times R. Fifty point eight squared times 
That's the way he owns. Seven seven four two watts. Therefore, total P is. Multiply by three, three times seven seven four two equals twenty three thousand two hundred twenty six watts. D total S. Yep, you good spot. You've got two sides of the triangle. We might as well use Pythagoras' theorem now. So we got square root of PT squared plus Q T squared. That's the square root of two three two two six squared plus the other one. Oh, this bloody board. Three, eight, seven, one, oh, three, eight. And in all honesty, we'd probably quote these as to three significant figures 38.7 kVA. 23.2 kilowatts and 31.0 to three significant figures. K var. And please be careful, it is lowercase k for our engineer and killer. Uppercase k is the computer 1024 killer. All right? All happy with that? Yep. This last example has three phase 60 hertz line connected to three identical capacitors connected in delta as shown. The line current is 22 amps. Calculate the capacitance of each capacitor. So that's connected in delta. Might not look very much like it, but it is one way of drawing a delta connected system. Let's just put it in our more familiar way of like that. There are three equal capacitors and the question is saying that the line current is 22 amps find C. I think that needs some extra information. I'm going to give it 550 volts, 60 hertz. How can I start with that? I know the voltage across each capacitor because the phase voltage in delta is the same as the line voltage. So we know that's 550 volts. If we can find XC, then we can use XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC to find the capacitance, can't we? We can. Can you see how 
we could find XC in this case. Is there another quantity from the information given that we can calculate at this stage? So, in delta, we can calculate the phase current from phi L over root 3. 22 over root 3 is 12.7 amps. No. The help was in the previous problem. How can I calculate now XC? Yes, AL over IP. Because the phase has got the 550 volt line voltage across it. Omega. Voltage E L and E, e the vo line voltage and phase voltage are the same in delta. Yeah. Phase current and line current are the same in star. It's really it's really E P by by E P the same. Yes. But you're being given E L. So you, what you could do is you could say you could say here, in delta, EP is equal to EL, and then use EP there, or you could just write that in, showing that you know that. If you look at the diagram, you can see that you've got the phase, the line voltage across each of those three capacitors. And again, that's all about the fact that we're, we're able, because that's balanced, because that's, the question says they're all the same, we're able to isolate just that circuit and treat it as, as one circuit and then consider afterwards if we need to that there's three lots of that circuit all working together to do the same thing. Because yeah, if that was a three phase power factor correction system you just design it for one phase and that would work for all three if that's a balanced load. Yeah. Yeah, so now we also know that XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC. And that rearranges to C is equal to 1 over 2 pi F. C numbers in I did say sixty hertz, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, times forty three point three. I get what what are the numbers on your calculator? Sorry? Sixty one point three times ten to the minus six farads equals sixty one point three microfarads. Us electricians don't have these kilogram joules per degree Kelvin stuff, do we? We have nice easy units like farads and 
ohms and amps.